I am about to show you hidden video footage of people deeply involved in HIV AIDS research, including Nobel Prize winners for HIV AIDS research, admitting things about HIV that you would never hear or read anywhere else. Included is hidden video footage of the man who won a Nobel Prize for discovering HIV, claiming openly that HIV is harmless to most people. His own words. I am about to expose to you the fraud of HIV testing and how unsuspecting people in Africa who know nothing about human biology or the nature of HIV tests are being deceived and drugged to death by the antiretroviral poisons being fed to them by large pharmaceutical corporations and the criminal individuals who are gaining financially by maintaining the ruse. Let's start by defining AIDS. What is AIDS? AIDS is an acquired immune deficiency syndrome. AIDS is a weakened immune system. That is what AIDS is. Now what causes AIDS? Any number of things. If you happen to have multiple bacterial or viral infections, or one serious bacterial infection, you could end up with AIDS, because your immune system could be stressed beyond what it can handle. Also, if your immune system is weak due to malnutrition, you would have AIDS. Yes, this means there are millions of people in the world with AIDS without HIV. In fact, HIV AIDS is a misnomer because as I'm about to uncover for you, HIV does not cause AIDS, despite what you've been told. So we know AIDS is the weakening of the body's immune system by disease or malnutrition. Now malnutrition is something from which many people in Africa just so happen to suffer. That we have known what causes acquired immune deficiency diseases for at least 70 years. It's in the medical textbooks. It's there for you to read. Number one cause on the face of this earth is malnutrition and starvation. That's African. Look to the headlines of the October 3rd issue of the London Times, Sunday Times last year. And the inside headlines that screamed across two pages the plague that never was. Speak to Philip and Evelyn Krynan, who head partage with an organization of 250 people, their own hospital, their own doctors, their own laboratories, who have lived in the heart of the epidemic, supposedly, or the supposed epidemic, for five years. There is no epidemic. It doesn't exist. They are there. They're not some character who goes through from the World Health Organization and says, oh, I've seen the people dying. Of course you have. We all saw them on television in Somalia. What do you think you were looking at? That was AIDS. Due to starvation. Due to malnutrition. So they essentially redefine malnutrition as AIDS in Africa because you don't need an HIV test. And so millions of people in Africa were told, you have this fatal disease. And the only cure for it is not clean water, nutritious food, all those other things that many Africans do not have. It's toxic, expensive drugs from the rich countries. When the HIV AIDS craze was first being propagandized by the media worldwide, millions upon millions of Africans were fraudulently diagnosed with HIV AIDS and prescribed toxic pharmaceutical chemicals intentionally designed to kill them. These were malnourished people who quite accurately could be described as having AIDS because they did have AIDS, something which had nothing to do with HIV. However, they were being misled to believe that the drugs meant to treat HIV could also treat AIDS because HIV AIDS. That was the pharmaceutical companies propagandizing through the mainstream media and the World Health Organization. The HIV AIDS drugs, primarily AZT, being given to people are killing them. Did you know that there is a 100% death rate by immune deficiency amongst each and every single person who takes the HIV AIDS antiretroviral drugs? 100% death rate. Did you know, however, that each and every single person who has ever refused to take the HIV AIDS drugs has lived a healthy life? None who refuse the drugs die of immune deficiency related causes. None. Whether they are diagnosed with HIV or not. I remember in 1992, after I first tested positive, I became involved in an organization called Women at Risk. There were 11 of us at the time on the board and involved in the group. All of us except three were on the medications. In the year and a half that I was involved with Women at Risk, every single woman in that organization on the drugs died. Every single one except the three of us 
who weren't taking them. AZT is highly mutagenic, meaning that it destroys the genes in cells and has been shown to cause cancer in rodents. It targets the bone marrow where B lymphocyte blood cells are being made. These are the very cells an AIDS patient needs most for immunity. AZT destroys randomly bone marrow, kidneys, liver, intestines, muscle tissue, the brain, and central nervous system. Peter Duisberg claims AZT actually causes AIDS itself. AZT does, does directly causing AIDS uh, defining diseases. You know, AIDS is a lot of the things, but it doesn't cause Kaposi sarcoma, I think, but it does cause immunodeficiency. It was designed to do that. It was designed to kill human cells. In fact, the manufacturer says that uh, specifically that it can cause uh, AIDS-like diseases. And the manufacturer, that is Boris Welcome, says it is often difficult to distinguish adverse events possibly associated with cedovudin or cedovudin administration, which is ACT, from underlying signs of HIV disease. In other words, even they acknowledge, not just this, but that, CDV, uh, that ACT causes AIDS or AIDS-defining diseases. The HIV AIDS drugs are the cause of AIDS, and when given to anyone who already has AIDS, an accelerated death is all it offers. When given to healthy people, the result is the same. It terminates life. You terminate DNA, you terminate life. And they talk about side effects in the insert. When are you going to learn there is no such thing as a side effect in medicine? It's an unwanted direct effect. And you know what one of the unwanted direct effects of AZT is? Lymphoma, cancer, one of the diseases of AIDS, as they call it. Oh, another so-called side effect, which is really an unwanted direct effect, pancytopenia. You need a definition? Pancytopenia, pan, all, cyto, cells, penia, loss of loss of all your cells. That's AIDS. That is the definition of AIDS. So AZT, by definition, by their own drug insert, causes AIDS, and nobody survives AZT. That will eventually lead to your death. And they've cut the dosage way down because it was killing them too fast. It's like giving somebody a large dose of strychnine and they die within five minutes. And so the next person, you give them a, a, a few drops of it and they last four or five days and you say, strychnine's a wonderful drug. This person lasts five times longer. The mass poisonings of unsuspecting Africans were going on in Africa behind everyone else's backs in the West, while people in the West were being told that Africans had HIV AIDS. The propagandists needed to continuously fraudulently mention HIV and AIDS together to create a false link between those words and justify their proclamations of an AIDS epidemic in Africa one which they manufactured entirely. There is not a single scientific paper which claims categorically that HIV causes AIDS, not a single reference anywhere in the scientific literature, because HIV does not cause AIDS. To claim in a scientific paper that HIV causes AIDS could easily incur lawsuits when the aforementioned statement is proven to be false, because it is false. However, the media keeps saying HIV causes AIDS, and people write articles claiming HIV causes AIDS but none of them can give you a reference to the scientific literature which asserts that statement as fact. All you will find is other deceptive propaganda pieces written under the guise of someone's opinion, but written deceptively to defraud lay people. The first time I really questioned it, I was working on a project where we were measuring HIV in people's blood at this place called uh, Specialty Laboratories in Santa Monica. I was just an, a, a consultant there, and I came in about three days a month, and we were working on that, and at some point we needed to re-up our, our grant from the NIH to work on that, and I had to write it. And so the first line of that was, HIV is the probable cause of AIDS. And I wrote that, and then I said, well, I need a paper, some kind of scientific paper, to reference that statement, because when you make a, scientific, a statement like that, that's like a fact, you need to say, here's how come I know that, right? You put a little one, if it's the first statement you've made, and then you put down at the bottom of the paper, you have a one, and you say, here's a paper by somebody that describes why that statement's true, right? And so I said, to, I said well, what's that? I don't know, let me think about, it. what is that paper? Who do I go to for that? 
And I looked around, I asked a couple of virologists at that company, and they said, no, you don't have to reference I said, I have to reference that because I, I don't know where that came from. How do I know that? And it turned out that nobody knew it. There wasn't a scientific reference, like a, a paper that somebody had submitted with like experimental data in it and like logical discussion and said, here's how come we know that HIV is the probable cause of AIDS. There was nothing out there like that. Nothing. We've talked about AIDS and the fact that HIV does not cause it. But let's talk about HIV. What is HIV? HIV is a supposed retrovirus supposedly discovered by Robert Galler and Luke Montagnier. Interestingly, HIV, according to the people who claim to have discovered it, is harmless to most people. We can be exposed to HIV many times without being chronically infected. Our immune system could get rid of the virus within a few weeks if you have a good immune system. If you have a good immune system, then your body can naturally get rid of HIV. Yes. If you take a poor African who's been infected and you build up their immune system, is it possible for them to also naturally get rid of it? I would think so. That's an, import that's an important It's point. important knowledge which is uh, completely neglected. You know, people always think of uh, drugs and vaccine. So this is a message which may be different from, the, from the, what you heard before, no? They're closing? No, no, the, my, yes, my message is different from what uh, you heard from Fauci or... Uh, yes, yeah. it's a little different. It's different. So, HIV does not cause AIDS, and as revealed by the man who discovered it himself, HIV is harmless to most people. But how is HIV even tested? Well, there are a number of ways, and none of these tests work. Because of the different criteria that apply in different countries, you can be considered, you can test HIV positive in one country and be given an AIDS diagnosis as a result of that, whereas in another country you won't test HIV positive and you won't be given an, an AIDS diagnosis. It's ludicrous that you can be positive in one country and not positive in another. Theoretically, I could be diagnosed with AIDS in the United States, but if I take three steps to my right, I wouldn't be diagnosed with AIDS, or I would lose my AIDS diagnosis when I crossed the border. 30,000 Russians who tested positive for HIV were then tested with another test that's supposedly far more accurate to confirm the positivity. And 66 out of 30,000 proved to be positive. That means that the test HIV is 99.997% inaccurate. You want to take a test that's three thousandths of a percent right? And you're going to rely on that? But that's what they're doing to people out there. They're taking a test that is not only invalid, it's totally misleading. In fact, when you get results like that, then I would say you're going to be more correct that if you're read as being negative, consider yourself positive. And if you're positive, consider yourself negative. And by the way, at the request of many individuals, I did go for a test a couple of weeks ago in New York City at the biggest clinic there that does more testing than anybody else. And the doctor who ran it was bragging about the fact that he did more. When I told him about the book I wrote, he said, shh, don't say anything. My patients might hear. In the scientific paper Luc Montagnier, Rob Gallo, and his associates wrote, they claimed that HIV might be the cause of AIDS. However, the HIV AIDS propagandists used the media to make false reports that HIV did in fact cause AIDS, even though there was no scientific evidence for that and there were no scientific claims of that. This allowed criminals like Rob Gallo and his associates to spread the HIV AIDS lie through the media and brainwash society without being held accountable for a lawsuit. Not that the general public knew anything about HIV to sue anyone, but in case they did, Gallo and his scumbag friends could say, we never said HIV causes AIDS, the media did. Interestingly, Rob Gallo, in the scientific paper in which he took part, did in fact initially say that HIV caused AIDS. He was subsequently found guilty of fraud for making that statement, because that statement was false and devoid of any scientific evidence whatsoever. Additionally, he was found guilty of misconduct for lying about and misrepresenting his peers. Before fraudulently involving himself with HIV AIDS, 
Rob Gallo had been involved in cancer research, where he ridiculously attempted to prove that the cause of cancer was a retrovirus. Naturally, his research yielded no results and was a monumental failure. None of the viruses he studied could be linked to cancer. However, when AIDS started to become sensationalized by the media for its apparently pervasive existence amongst homosexual men, Gallo would later seize upon the opportunity to claim in a media announcement with no scientific evidence whatsoever, by the way, that a variant of one of the cancer-causing viruses he was researching was the cause of AIDS. It was from there that the attention-seeking Rob Gallo would make a false name for himself for discovering HIV. He went from the unsubstantiated claim that cancer was caused by a retrovirus to the unsubstantiated claim that a variant of the non-existent cancer-causing virus was the cause of AIDS. Additionally, this virus is one which he fraudulently claimed to be his discovery when in fact he blatantly stole it from a team of French scientists of whom Luc Montagnier, the now co-discoverer of the retrovirus, was a member. Riding the whirlwind of public demand, Gallo made his move. On April 23, 1984, Secretary of Health and Human Services Margaret Heckler and Robert Gallo called a press conference together that would involve the United States Department of Health in what critics claim would become the biggest medical scientific blunder of all time. First, the probable cause of AIDS has been found, a variant of a known human cancer virus called HLT HTLV-3. With HTLV-3, Gallo's white elephant virus program made the jump from the cause of cancer to become the cause of AIDS and the target of billions of dollars in research funds. Simultaneously, as the press conference was going on, the blood test used to detect HIV was being patented, which would earn the U.S. Department of Health over $100 million a year and large financial kickbacks to Robert Gallo. The AIDS industry was born and the U.S. government was now fully invested. Naively, Secretary Heckler predicted that a vaccine would be ready for testing by 1986. We hope to have such a vaccine ready for testing in approximately two years. For the moment, everyone was happy about this discovery of the probable cause of AIDS. Gay activists were satisfied that the government was finally doing something. But the public was not aware that Gallo had bypassed a major checkpoint before making his announcement. He had not submitted his test results to other scientists for peer review. No one had a chance to critique or verify his claim, and his test results were not published in Science Magazine until one week after the press conference. This was a dangerous violation of scientific protocol. Suddenly, a challenge to Gallo's ethics emerged, which would become an international scandal. The Institut Pasteur in Paris claimed that Gallo's AIDS virus was identical to LAV, a virus Dr. Luc Montagnier had sent Gallo's lab six months before the press conference. The French were outraged and filed an international lawsuit against the U.S. Health Department on grounds that Gallo had pirated their discovery. The entire incident was embarrassing to the United States and had to be resolved diplomatically by President Reagan and Prime Minister Jacques Chirac of France. It is only because the French government saw the massive potential to make money from the so-called HIV virus that they refrained from suing the United States alongside Gallo and convinced Luc Montagnier to join Gallo as a co-discoverer of HIV. With this arrangement to split the profits made on the HIV blood test, the virus was given a new international name, the Human Immunodeficiency Virus, or HIV. Despite questions of Gallo's character and ethics, HIV had now gained international acceptance. Rob Gallo, the man who claims to have discovered the HIV virus, is a known fraud, a failed scientist, a thief, and a known liar. Let that sink in for a second. There is not a single scientific document which claims HIV causes any serious disease whatsoever. None. In fact, Carrie Mullis, the very man who is responsible for inventing the HIV test, has admitted there is no body of evidence that supports the claim that HIV causes any disease whatsoever. HIV is a lie. But what about the individuals who have perpetrated this lie? They are all multi-millionaires. The best evidence against the HIV hypothesis is that there is no evidence for it. In the vast scientific medical literature, over 100,000 journals published so far on HIV AIDS. We cannot find anywhere in this vast literature the evidence that HIV causes AIDS, that AIDS is a contagious disease, or that it 
even sexually transmitted. Information provided by the McFarlane Burnett Center in this 1998 public health brochure argues that the virus that causes AIDS has been in Africa for perhaps hundreds but not thousands of years and that it is likely to have spread to the human population from monkeys. It also argues that AZT or azidothymide is the best treatment for asymptomatic HIV infection and AIDS itself. However, it says that this only causes a two to three year improvement in life expectancy. This two to three year improvement in life expectancy is strengthened statistically by the claim that the infection causes up to a hundred percent of that HIV infection causes a hundred percent of people to develop AIDS and that once the HIV infection is developed it's there for life. Now in fact there have been a number of people who have tested positive for HIV in the early stages of the epidemic when the testing first became available who have not progressed to developing AIDS to this day and there are others who have previously tested positive who subsequently have tested negative. 